Hey, Robin Walters, thank you. I'm here in Tallinn, Estonia, and I'm here with the CIO of the Estonian government. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, hi, my name is Tavi Vapka. I'm the government CIO of Estonia. What does a government CIO do? <laughs> Runs the ICT in Estonia. I mean, like, uh, creates the best information society in the world. <laughs> and in Estonia, I guess that's both uh, an enormous opportunity um, because Estonia is well known for having a you know, digital society as a, its goal. Um, so how far along for, for that goal are you now? I'm like, yeah, for me, it's uh, I'm like a kid in a toy store. I mean, like, I'm a software engineer and being government uh, CIO in a country that actually wants to, like, wants to be digital. I mean, like, it's, it's a dream job. I can imagine. So, yeah, but uh, I'm like, uh, uh, we actually in a, like, in, in a bath uh, or in a journey to understand that uh, the country, or the countries uh, nowadays don't have borders, and you actually can have your citizens or or your I mean, like people and companies part of your your your, your ecosystem uh, in, in, in globally. So we're just providing solutions for that. Right. Um, so, what do you think is Estonia's main differentiator compared to other governments? Is it the online voting? Is it the online payments? Is it the Two things. I mean, like uh, one thing is that uh, not only not only Estonian politicians but also Estonian people have understood the privacy and data protection questions in a correct way. I mean, like they understand that uh, there is no big brother uh, in, in, in the times of Google and Apple. I mean, like you shouldn't be afraid of your own government. And if, if people actually trust your government, it, it gives you ability to actually create create stuff. But uh, I think even more important thing is that uh, the politicians have understood that uh, uh, building this information, information society is actually engineering work. So they don't, uh, I mean, they don't mix politician, politics and, and, and engineering. So they trust their engineers. Got it. Um, so one of the most famous programs that Estonia has rolled out is the e-residency program. Uh, can you briefly discuss what that is? Uh, yeah, that's the thing that you actually can become a like, virtual citizen basically. So you can be part of Estonian society and ecosystem without actually physically being here. So, so you can never come to Estonia and still be an Estonian exactly. resident? Exactly. Yeah. So how does it help Estonia? I mean, like, uh, if you have more and more people and companies connected with you, I mean, it's like with, with like the private sector. I mean, if you want to get more money, if you want to get more revenue and profit, you need more customers. So that's the same big countries. I mean, like, uh, to get more customers, Estonia needs to promote ourselves and then and, and give this kind of abilities. I mean, like, we, we can't benefit from from immigrants like 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 other other Western European countries because nobody wants to come here to the north. Or if they want to come, they want to go to the Norway or Sweden, where there is a way better uh, social benefits. Like uh, yeah, yeah. so, but we need we need to increase our customer base. That's the goal. So it's sort of to compete against other nations, um, sort of competition, talent, um, exact companies. There is a war war outside. If you haven't <laughs> noticed, <laughs> there is. Um, so, how popular has the program been so far? Extremely. I mean, like we got uh, five thousand applications with the first twenty four hours. But as the we're in the beta ver, uh, version, so it's quite uh, difficult to actually get it. I mean, like uh, you have to approach the closest Estonian embassy and then and, and, and keep a fingerprint and etc. So uh, in, in May we actually made it easier. Now it's just uh, you, you, you fill the application in, in in the web page and then you still have to go into the closest Estonian embassy and keep a fingerprint. So, uh, but we are ahead of the schedule. So, it's good. It's yeah. always good. We, um, we expect, of course, uh, Facebook type of curve soon. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. I'll be watching. Yeah. Um, so, uh, aside from the electronic identity, the uh, online voting, the e-residency program, what's next on the menu for the next five years? Say? Uh, zero hassle. I mean, like, especially for the companies uh, that they shouldn't have. I mean, like, government should be not invincible, but uh, the point is that you shouldn't have any transaction with the government. Everything happens. I mean, like, you just focus on doing your own business, and all the bookings and all that stuff just happens uh, somehow, magically. 
I can imagine that that would be a great blueprint for other governments in the world. Do you work with other nations to kind of see how they can develop sort of yes. similar systems? True, but but the thing is that uh, you still before you can start implementing those kind of solutions, you need to fix your your government architecture baseline, and not not many not too many countries actually have done it. So there are, for example, examples like uh, like Singapore, for example, South Korea. But uh, if you take uh, old Western European countries, they still need to fix the baseline before they can start delivering those kind of solutions. Okay. So it takes time for you. Okay, Tavi, thank you very much for your time, and best of luck. Yeah, thank you.